Now there's no doubt in my mind that the M1 MacBook Pro is my favorite laptop I've ever owned. I've had it for a few months now and I finally put together what I feel like is my favorite desk setup for this model to help me with productivity and workflow. I did a review a few weeks ago on the best M1 MacBook Pro accessories you can pick up in 2021 which will be linked down below for all of you. But with this video we've got some new gear given the circumstances. Now my ultimate stealth desk setup tour I did last week is different in many ways. The most obvious being the heavy monster that sits on it weighing over 100 pounds. It doesn't exactly make sense to add a standing desk to this scenario, but with this setup, it's the perfect opportunity to do something different. Now I'm trying super hard to get to 15,000 subs. So if you end up enjoying this video and you love the content, please make sure you smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. To kick off the video, we have this dope black motorized desk made by Adasin. It's a bit on the pricier side coming in at 600 bucks, but I love the look and feel of this desk. It complements the overall look very nicely. It adjusts from 24 to 50 inches in height rather quickly thanks to its smooth motor and it was a breeze to set up. It does come in multiple different color options. I chose this matte black version for obvious reasons. You guys know it's my favorite color. The chair I chose for this setup is the same as the chair that I use in my ultimate desk setup tour. This is the Hiken. You can pick it up on Amazon for around 200 bucks, which I personally feel is undervalued at this mark. I've reviewed and tested a ton of chairs on this channel and in my setups in the past. I mean, for 200 bucks, this is as good as it gets. In terms of the average person using it, I feel like this is just as good as a Herman Miller for a fraction of the cost. Getting to peripherals, we have none other than the glorious Model O wireless for my mouse. This is by far the best mouse I've ever used. Full review on this guy will be linked down below for you. It comes in at 80 bucks, which is a fantastic price for this monster. It's super light, it feels great, battery life is decent, and it has RGB lighting if that's something that you're into. If you are looking for a mouse that does it all in terms of gaming and something that's great for editing videos, look no further. You will need a USB type A to see adapter. I use this one from Syntec. It's super cheap. You can pick up a two pack for seven bucks on Amazon. The only downside for some with this mouse is that it doesn't support Bluetooth. Other than that, I absolutely love it. For my keyboard, we kept it simple using the Space Gray Magic Keyboard from Apple with its keypad. Now, based on the wireless keyboards I have tested with the M1 MacBook Pro, this being an Apple product seems to have worked the best for me in terms of connectivity. You obviously do have a ton of options out there to choose from. I mean, Logitech makes a great deal of wireless keyboards that also work great and come in at a fraction of the cost. As always, if you're interested in any of the stuff that we cover in today's video, I will make sure to leave everything linked down below for you guys. Getting to the left side, we have my Hue Wireless Go. It's a portable, rechargeable desk lamp that I use everywhere. I have multiple sets of these throughout my studio and game room. I absolutely love Philips and their Hue line of products. They last a long time. They're very durable and super easy to use and connect. I control literally everything from my Hue app. You can set different zones throughout your home for different scenarios based on your lighting needs and wants. If you don't want to go through the hassle of doing so, you can go ahead and select from multiple built-in presets that this lamp offers by the push of a button. It comes in at 80 bucks and also works with HomeKit, Alexa, and Google Assistant. Getting over to these speakers, we have the Audio Engine A2 Plus Wireless. These are some of my favorite speakers that I've ever used. They are a bit on the pricier side, coming in at 250 bucks, but work super well in terms of providing nice, crisp, warm audio. They come in black, red, and white color options and seamlessly connect to any device you pair them with. Audio Engine has been around for years, giving creators excellent sound quality with a track record to back it up, creating products that sound great and are easy to use. You don't need to install any software. They are ready to go out of the box with multiple different input options. For my monitor, we have the 34-inch curved display from Alienware. One of my favorite parts of my setup is this beast. 3440 by 1440 for its display with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. The colors look amazing and provide fantastic details when you're editing your videos or even gaming. It comes in at just around a thousand bucks and is well worth its price. You obviously have a ton of options out there in this price range, so it's all going to depend on personal preference. This display is definitely my favorite. The display itself is being held up with this single monitor mount from Huanuo. Uanuo, whatever it's called. It comes in at 50 bucks and supports a display from 22 to 35 inches that weighs less than 26 pounds. It has a wide variety of movements you can play with and adjusts and extends better than most arms I've used in the past. You have a 360 degree landscape rotation and a tilt angle from negative 30 to 85 degrees. When I do need a second display, I prop my M1 MacBook Pro on this aluminum stand from Design. It's super cheap, coming in at around 25 bucks. It's adjustable and very sturdy. Compatible with almost anything, this is my go-to laptop stand whenever I need to use it. Now, when I'm not using the MacBook as my second display, it tucks neatly in the 12 South book arc, saving me a ton of space while giving me somewhere to put my laptop. This works with a ton of different laptops out there, but is marketed towards MacBooks, providing you with different sleeve options based on the size of the model that you are using. For my external SSDs, when I need to grab and go, the only two that I use are the Seagate Fire Cuda and the Samsung X5 Thunderbolt. These are the fastest and best SSDs, in my opinion, in 2021. If you are looking for the best SSDs for your workflow, I will make sure to leave that video link down below for you guys 
buys as well. I reviewed a ton of them and stacked them up against each other with multiple different options for different budgets out there. For my microphone, we're using the Shure MV7 on a Samson boom arm. This thing is amazing, super lightweight, compact. This particular setup with this arm is my favorite since it's easy to move around and adjust while collapsing for a smaller fit based on the size that you need in your setup. You can use it as either a USB or XLR microphone based on what you're into and it produces the same quality as an SM7B for a fraction of the price, while at the same time also working as a USB microphone. Coming back to the most important part of the setup, we have the 13-in-1 anchor docking station. This is what holds everything together. Now this particular one is slightly different from the one that we looked at in my best M1 MacBook accessories video, seeing how this one isn't Thunderbolt. It does come in at almost 100 bucks cheaper than that version, but if a Thunderbolt dock is something that you absolutely need, I will make sure to leave both of them linked down below for you. Now this does also sport a display port option on the back, something that you don't get with the Thunderbolt version. You also have two HDMI ports to go with its fantastic finish. I do like the color scheme a lot better and wish that Anchor offered the same color option on its Thunderbolt version. You have an 85 watt laptop charging USB port, an 18 watt USB type C port, a USB type C data port, four USB type A ports, an ethernet port, DC input, a 3.5 millimeter aux port, and a SD micro SD card slot to go with all of those display ports. It's absolutely fantastic. You can use a 10% coupon on Amazon when checking out, making this significantly cheaper than the Thunderbolt version. And both versions, in my opinion, look much better than the one that looks outdated from CalDigit that you guys see everywhere. To add even more color to this setup, we have the Philips Hue Play 2-pack base kit behind the monitor and under the desk, which depending on the mood can be adjusted just like the Hue Go and the rest of the lineup of lighting fixtures that they offer. I feel like I'm missing something. If I am, please make sure you go ahead and comment down below and tell me what you would add in this setup to complete its look. I feel like me being a perfectionist, I'm always forgetting something. It's kind of annoying. Either way, like I mentioned before, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next episode. Peace.